So Ben and I have been going down to Baja fishing for like eight years now. It was actually like one of the first things I did with Flycraft. We got an invite to check out a new zone this year, which we were pretty excited about. Basically the plan was, was to spend about three days fishing this new zone. Let's see. So flying here. Shit, I don't know what you're gonna do. Probably come up here and over. And that's gonna be an adventure. Yo, pulling into your road now. I got tied up at Richard Bagels. I know basically nothing about this trip. Right. Just launch out and like fishing sick all around it. But apparently we're 30 miles away from where roosters are. Yeah, we're close to the mangroves. So the mangroves are in our backyard. Um. Okay. So it does sound like it's not beachy around in here, but it's mangrovey. Yeah. Which honestly, dude. Roosters are dope, and like, that's what I care most about. Right. But like, we might be able to like, crush mangrove fishing. Our boats are really well suited for it. Coming back could be gnar. Cause we'll be facing the wind. And <clears throat> we'll probably have a fly crash trap to the front of the mango. Yup, yup. All right, so, so this is the top secret stuff. I don't know. He says they kind of come back in here a little bit, but those are the zones. We are staying here, so it's quite a bit versus here to there. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's gonna be windy most of the time. I think the wind might calm down a little bit when we get towards the end of the trip. Do you have those secret flies? Did you bring any, did you tie any? Are those dope with the one? I think a lot of this stuff is mullety and macro-like. We got some more sardini stuff. So I basically said I need to bring flies. Shut up. <laughs> nice. Ben? Ooh. Right? Yup. Yeah, these are all super sexy. I guess let's get to the exciting stuff. I think people are probably gonna figure out that we don't know shit about ocean fishing. Pretty fast. <laughs> My flies look like I do. See, but that's kind of the whole name of the game. It's not cool to go out and do stuff that you already know what the hell you're doing. It's fun to go out and do stuff that you don't know what you're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard Delta Airlines Flight 2998. All carry-on items should now be stowed securely, either in an overhead bin or under the seat in front of you. Oh. The weather forecast morning in the boat is going to be cold. I'm bringing full on jacket, winter hat, poncho. Oh, I've got this gangster ass poncho that like comes down to my knees. Matches your big brimmed hat. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Sure that's I've got a new right. hat you're going to love too. Put it on the tailgate and then me and Ben can grab each side. You and that band's a little yeah. person. <laughs> this one's long enough. Okay, good. We're good then. Does that look way cool, Kevin? So cool, bro. Sweet, dude. Man. Oh, you have your like dorky hat light. You're good. That was really mean. And uncalled for. I'm just getting warmed up. Tough up your skin. <laughs> it's gonna be a long week. <laughs> Alright, let's load up the panga. God damn, Aaron, that was beautiful. So we wake up the next morning and we decide to just check out the mangroves. It is like unseasonably cold. It's like in the 50s in the morning. We're like wearing puffy jackets and raincoats and beanies. We we're gonna go to one of the few areas with a bunch of mangroves. Kind of like you see in Florida and other parts of Mexico, but Baja isn't really known for snook or mangroves. So usually the plan is when we go to Baja, we're like laser focused on catching rooster fish and those fish are incredibly tough to catch. Sometimes we luck out, usually we don't. Um, but what was nice about this new zone is we're gonna have the opportunity for some closer in fish um, without as much travel time. And in the mangroves, ideally snook. Vamos a 
bailar, vamos a bailar. Oh no, a little less accurate with this rod for sure. Just wanted to make sure my hook worked. There we go, a little warm up fish. Well, oh I sure did baby. Was it? Yeah. If there's any snook in here, they gotta be right there. Benny boy's turn. Ben's gonna catch him big old snook. You're gonna get a big old snook, Benny boy. Ben's gonna get a big old, big old fish. We fish our butts off all day. Um, it's a good first day because, you know, being trout fishermen from the West, whenever we do saltwater trips, it takes us a little bit to get in tune with the strip set. As you can see with my heckling with Ben, he took a little bit more and a lot more heckling was needed to get him from trout setting to strip setting. It's also a jig hook, which could help us a lot. Ooh. That was a trout set, by the way. Ben. I know, but I haven't seen you do a strip set yet. At some point, you gotta practice. Do a strip set right now. Yeah. Look at that, you lassoed me. I'll take that any day, as long as it's a real strip set. Oh yeah, Ben, that's a snook. Snooky, snooky, snooky. Snooky, snooky, slam! Yeah, real fish! Is the baby of the fish I caught earlier. Didn't catch any snook, so despite you hear us talking about snook when we're talking about the maps and while we're mic'd up in the boat, we do see a few. We got a couple follows, didn't get any eats, and they weren't that big. The water temps just weren't warm enough for the snook, but we learned some really good zones to go back and get them, and we learned some really cool techniques. So despite having what we think were the right flies and making pretty good casts into you know, structure, you know, roots, branches, that type of thing. Didn't catch any snook. That's, that's all right. It was a great first day. We caught a bunch of grouper, jacks, all sorts of weird Baja fish. Um, caught quite a few fish. Most of them weren't that big, but you know, it was great practice and it was beautiful. We saw amazing birds, coyotes, all sorts of great stuff. And uh, even caught one like pretty good sized grouper that just exploded my 10 weight, which was pretty cool. Basically I was fighting him. He ran under like a down branch underwater. When he went to run, snapped the rod. We end, and Kevin somehow got it all on drone, which is pretty cool. Ended up hand lining the fish in. So that was pretty fun. Still got some Mary flies. I think this is the bat, the one I caught that reach on. Do you remember? It was this one. Or this guy? Yeah. That one definitely has chewed up a little more. This, this was me like knocking off the Mary flies in smaller versions. Uh, these ones are Brett Dawson. I tied that one. 
Um, show me what else you have for flies and then I'll mm -hmm. show you. These are all the jungle flies. So we go for the gold, we're like, we're gonna go, we're gonna get some roosters. It's the mangroves are cool, we could go catch some little fish, but the water temps aren't quite there. Water temps aren't quite there for roosters either, but we're here, let's give it a go. So we motor 28 miles out and we're like, man, we hope the seas stay calm because if not, this is gonna be terrifying on the way back because we're in a small little pango with a fly craft loaded on the back so that we can burn all those miles and then launch the fly craft off the boat to do our fishing. So we get there, we start warming up um, at this cool pier, this old abandoned pier that's deteriorating and good casting practice, we don't catch any fish. So we go out to these reefs and these beaches and um, Kevin's filming from the Panga and Ben and I are fishing like in the surf and it's, it's pretty cool and it was like a little spooky but it was fun. We we're just like rolling through these pretty good sized swells staying right, trying to stay right on the edge of where they're breaking so we don't get washed into the reefs. And uh, it was awesome. We saw a bunch of fish. We caught a lot of jacks, um, some snappers, some grouper. Weren't seeing any roosters, but that being said, we were also just like blind casting. Um, our captain Juan, who was in the panga, wasn't seeing any roosters either. So after a pretty good morning of catching all sorts of fish um, that weren't what we thought we were gonna be targeting, we head into the boat and we're like, yeah, we'll just cruise around and maybe head back early. Uh. This is a nice rooster, dude. Oh, is it a jack? Yeah, a jack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I thought that was a rooster. Man, those jacks attack the flies just like roosters. Yeah. Yeah. So we get back into the panga, we're thinking we're pretty much done using the fly craft, strap it on there, and then all of a sudden we see the birds. And if you've done any saltwater fishing, birds are always a good sign. And these birds are like probably a mile or more out and they're just crashing in the water and there's thousands of them. So we blast over there, the second we shut the engine off, we start seeing roosters and we were seeing roosters in like the 50 to 80 pound range it was just absolute madness we had like half an hour where we were seeing roosters everywhere and to be honest 
We didn't take the time to launch the Flycraft because we just were in panic mode and I really wish we did because we had too many people fishing off one boat and someone would hook up to a fish and then we'd cross lines and it would break off. So we definitely hooked a few roosters and they all just schooled roosters, us. Roosters, roosters, this side. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ben! Oh, another one coming in. Oh. Most of the really big roosters, we'd get them to follow right to the boat, and then we couldn't get them to eat. But yeah, we did hook some big roosters, we lost them, but we had a pretty insane time catching like tons of jack. And these little like six, eight, ten pound jacks would just rip your arm off. They would take you into the back and under the fly line. And what was interesting is you'd, you'd see these roosters, so you'd cast to them. Then you'd hook up and you'd think it was a rooster because a little jack would come up out of nowhere and steal your fly before the roosters. So you hear us talk and we're like, oh, we're hooked into a big rooster. And uh, we weren't. I mean, a couple times we were. and They obviously had smart dust and unhooked themselves. But yeah, so it was pretty wild. And um, it's a lot of fun catching an eight pound jack. It really is. And honestly, even seeing a big rooster fish and hooking it and losing it or not even hooking it makes all the travel down to Baja worth it and you learn a lot every time you see a rooster fish you become more likely to catch one in the future so on the way back from the rooster zone on day two of the trip when you know we're exploring this new zone we have our great captain Juan who's showing us around we motored 28 miles out someplace that you know you're not gonna motor there in the fly crab, but fortunately we had the panga to get us out there and launch out. Pretty exciting day fishing, and we had been sheltered around this point, and we didn't realize what the wind was doing to the big 28 mile section of open ocean that we had to cross to get back to where we launched the boat. I mean, this area is so rural and remote, there wasn't a place for us to launch the boat any closer. We launched in like the nearest town to this one spot. We get around the point and we just get hit by walls of water. Like the bow of the boat is just diving through these big four or five foot waves at times. And before we even had a chance to put on like our rain gear and stuff, we're all just soaked to the bunk. So it's like mid 60s, super windy, giant swells. We're in a 22 foot panga, which is not really big enough for the amount of people we had and the amount of open ocean we had to cross, let alone the fact that we have one of our original stealths we ever built strapped on the back. Now this isn't the Stealth 2.0 or the X, it's self bailing. So as we're getting pelted with these waves and the boat's filling up, which fortunately has a bilge pump, and we're scooping buckets of water out too. The fly craft is also getting filled up. You'd rock in a wave and you didn't realize how much water was in the fly craft and the whole panga would start to tip and we'd all have to jump to one side to counterbalance while one person went back and rapidly just builds. Meanwhile, we're all shaking, we're freezing cold. It's terrifying. Our radio stopped working. So if anything happened, we wouldn't have been able to radio for help. It was a long, long drive back, hours, and we were exhausted. Um, so yeah, a few close calls of the boat, what seemed like it almost tipped over, um, but we made it back and that's part of the, advan the adventure there, you know? We go back to where we're staying at the house, have a nice night, wake up the next morning, and jet back to home base where Aaron's spot is. And we spend the next two days there. This is a spot that we're very familiar with. And this is where we do a lot of our beach fishing. And we had seen, in those two days, we actually saw a lot of roosters. Um, but if you've ever beach fished for roosters, two days is, if you get one in two days, it's, you're lucky. Like, if you beach fish for a week, you might get one or two or three. But basically, we were in this zone and day one, most of the roosters we were getting were just, they were out of range. We could not get a cast to them. Um, but we saw quite a few cruising, but they were just a little too far that we could hit with a 10 weight and a little bit of a headwind. So day two, we had this awesome idea, which if we had done it on day one, um, in the new spot that is, it might've worked a lot better because 
First day back at home base, like I said, we did see a lot of roosters. So we anchored a boat out and I just sat there for hours anchored out, like a couple hundred feet offshore where we couldn't cast. And of course that day, we don't see any roosters. I'm in the perfect spot, we're sitting there all day, and you know, it's just a different day, slightly different weather, slightly different winds. We're not seeing schools of bait around us that day like we had the day before. So yeah, you know, that's what it is. Uh, could be worse. Hung out in a beautiful place, looking at a beach, you know, amazing scenery, good company, eating good food, and um, we've got some really good leads for the next time we go. So all in all, fantastic trip, and can't wait to go back.